Hello all. Yeah, it's um, Ben Knowles here, just checking in from London. Um, so I apologise for any noise in the background. I was uh, kind of slightly caught short by a last minute job that dropped me off just around the corner. And so I've had went and sheltered in a nice quiet pub, but then uh, everyone's come into the pub. So I'm perched out on the street. So there might be some a little bit of background noise. That might give you a bit of insight into uh, how we operate as a company. Super lean, everyone on bikes. Um, this is actually me uh, carrying a couple of passengers around on a, on a sunnier day. So um, who are we and what do we do as a company? As a company, we do things on bikes that we think will be very difficult for other people to do on bikes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, uh, tra traditional, traditionally you might think of cargo bikes as uh, something that can do small deliveries. What we've done is we've we've looked at things the other way around. So we've looked at what jobs need doing and then we've designed techniques and training that allow us to do slightly crazy things. Because what we can see happening is that there, there's going to be a huge amount of psycho logistics. Um, uh, it's going to be a huge part of how logistics is done in the future. Um, so we've we've targeted the subset of work that is the most difficult to do. So, for example, carrying around a brass band. This is a little bit niche, admittedly, but this is something that we do occasionally do. This was a um, car-free day on London in London. So uh, in 2019, we had um, there was a brass band marching around a square. Uh, and they weren't able to reach everyone, so we gave them a lift so they could reach everyone else. Uh, we do very large hot food deliveries. We carry people around. Um, really what I want to get across to you today is um, the range of different jobs that can be done by cargo bikes. Um, I also have some data to share from with you from uh, some recent studies that we've done. Uh, so this is a, uh, a large delivery round. This would be, uh, this would be about 70 deliveries. Um, the cost, because we can amalgamate so many deliveries, we're able to bring out really spectacular cost per drops while also being able to pay our riders really well. A key part of what we do is our training. So um, it's our model is not just um, getting hold of people and chucking them on a bike and setting them off. Our model is very highly professionalized. So people have to complete a qualification that's externally assured before they can work for us. And that's just the first qualification that they'll get at, in their time at Pedal Me. Once they've achieved their first qualification, uh, to allow them to carry cargo. They'll then start working for us and start working towards their passenger qualification. It's something like uh, we get 40 applicants a week of which uh, maybe two people will get to come through and meet us and start training. And one of those will then go on to work for us and achieve the basic qualification. And then half of those one people that come and join us um, won't make the cut for one reason or another. So we're extremely selective and extremely specialist in what we do. Um, once people have passed their passenger qualification, then they can then uh, work towards their trader qualification. Um, I just put this picture in because it kind of captures uh, how lean we are as a business. So this was actually um, working on the uh, the Lambeth project, which I'm going to talk a bit more about in a minute. Uh, this is Rio. He's optimizing the drops from the front of his bike before going and doing some of the deliveries himself and after doing some of the deliveries himself. This kind of like really lean model of working means that we can be, we can deliver that um, really competitive prices um, while also paying our staff really pretty well um, and it's kind of pretty essential to the way we work. It's also extremely tough. 
Uh, here's like a, a nice little data viz that our data scientist Nico put together for us. Um, so Nico spends maybe four days a week writing and then uh, he fits in uh, bits of uh, data analysis when he can. Uh, but this shows the scale of ground that we cover in London. So the Lambeth project, um, our traditional markets are business to business. Uh, that's where we kind of started out. So um, transporting reaper graphics or carrying people to meetings or um, uh, delivering large hot food deliveries to offices. With um, the lockdown coming in in the middle of March, something like 95% of our work disappeared uh, because of the because the businesses were no longer operating, and we had to pivot quite quickly to find new work. One of the sectors that we started working in is working with charities and local authorities to get deliveries to um, to sick and shielded individuals. Um, so this project ended, this particular project ended up being really quite big. We think probably this is the largest e-cargo bike logistics operation in the UK to date, involving 10,000 deliveries, 150 tons across 20,000 kilometers. It was exceptionally challenging because uh, we were uh, told to expect 200 deliveries a day, but uh, then given 400 deliveries a day, which meant some really uh, quite long days for everyone involved. I think I ended up working 13, 14 hours some days. Uh, we w wouldn't normally push that hard to get every delivery done, but in this case, uh, because the food was going to shielded and sick people, and it's very apparent when we were arriving that people were quite often really quite desperate for the food that we were delivering, uh, that we felt that we couldn't let a single delivery drop. Um, that was especially challenging, especially on the days where it was hammering it down with rain all day and we were um, going flat out and we had to do extra things to make sure that the, uh, the food stays dry, putting tops across the top, the top which uh, kind of just slows things down a touch. this slide going to play? Uh, it doesn't look like it, never mind. It might not cope with video so well, if that, yeah. That's, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so this is some more um, data analysis uh, that was carried out by Nico. We uh, picked out the data from September uh, this year and we had a look at average speeds uh, to do an, a comparison with most vehicle speeds in London. And as you can see, in, cent in central London, so the very heart of the city, our speed advantage is quite considerable. Um, slightly further out in the inner London uh, region, so that's the yellow region you can see on the map, um, our average travel, travel speed was 16.4 kilometers per hour instead of 18.7 uh, kilometers per hour for uh, motors. We do actually have uh, a project running at the minute, um, Project 18.7, which is aimed at finding ways to bring our average travel speed in that outer zone to um, 18.7 so we can compete with motor vehicles. Well, we already compete because although these are the tra raw travel speeds, in actual fact, our journey distances are less, and we also save considerable time at pick up and drop. So the the studies that we found show that it typically with um, deliveries it takes between nine and fifteen minutes for motors to park, whereas here's a nice picture of us delivering to a shop, and I don't know. Maybe it's like 15, 20 seconds to uh, walk the bike up onto the pavement and park, and then another 20 seconds to make the delivery and then head on to the next one. Of course, 
in logistics, your main cost is time. So uh, staff cost is overwhelmingly your biggest cost center. If you can do more jobs in the same time, then uh, you can uh, you can deliver lower cost and you can pay people more. Um, there's been various there's often discussion about bikes being cheaper to run. I'm actually not entirely convinced that that's correct because motor vehicles uh, need very little maintenance. Uh, you know, you could drive a van for like 15,000 miles before you have to do anything to it. And that's just not the case with cargo bikes where everything will break on a weekly basis and you'll need to, to maintain them and replace parts. Um, it's more the competitive advantage that you gain in speed. By the way, uh, for academics listening, um, we're more than happy to share our data and uh, talk to you about what we do. Just get in touch with us through social media or I'll show my phone number and email address in a minute. One of the misconceptions um, is that because you have a smaller carrying capacity on a cargo bike, that your the distance travelled per delivery is going to be greater. And yes, there are circumstances in which that will be the case, but we've run analysis on uh, data from a number of our clients, which actually shows that overall our travel distances are slightly less, even though we carry less. Um, and the reason you can make that happen by careful planning and using distribution sites and mini hubs. Um, so not only are you quicker to do the delivery, not only are you saving time at pick up and drop, you're also traveling less distance per delivery. Um, so it's a you know it's a triple whammy of uh, much more efficiency. And if you look at um, the sustainability gains from using um, e-cargo bikes, I I don't want to sound like I'm having a dig at electric vehicles because electric vehicles clearly are a huge gain over conventional motor vehicles if you do indeed have to use a motor vehicle but one of our bikes can cover 288,000 kilometers on the eight and a half tons or so of co2 that's needed to make an electric van this is this is one of the market leading electric vans um, in the sector made in the north of England with uh, lower, uh, less CO2 intensive electricity. So it can be considered the best case. We can get a lifetime of use out of one of our e-cargo bikes before that electric van has even got out of the garage. So on the CO2 that's needed to make that electric van, we will have a lifetime of use out of our bikes. So the, the savings the scale of savings in CO2 are huge, and obviously the savings relative to diesel vehicles, um, you know, are, are even bigger. Anthony, I completely take your point about uh, the food argument, um, and it, it is one of the things that's um, that's hardest to quantify, and there are quite big uncertainties on that. Um, but what we've done is we've based this calculation on um, studies of what our riders are eating and uh, so how much more they're eating on days when they're riding compared to when they're not riding. Cool, final slide. So in summary, e-cargo bikes are quicker than motors in the cities. They cover less distance per delivery and they spend less time at each drop. 
so they're more and more efficient for the bulk of logistics that are being carried out by motors at the minute. So please, please stop designing for motors for urban logistics. It's not a good use of people's time and that is not how future logistics is going to be done. Um, my contact details are on this slide. Um, so feel free to get in touch if you've got any ideas, thoughts, uh, want to invest five million, all, all options welcome. And I look forward to people's questions.